Father, we love you and thank you today. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you that you are so good. We're trusting in you today to reveal some truth to us. Help us to get some good wisdom and understanding and knowledge from your word that we may be able to serve you to the best of our ability. Father, we truly love you and thank you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Today we're going to be talking about showing generosity. Sometimes that can be uh, a hard thing to do because we have our money, we work for our money, and we feel like it's only mine and I don't want to let go of it and give it to anybody else. Sometimes we can be greedy in that way, but God has called us as Christians to want to give. Matter of fact, he gives us many scriptures, and I'm going to get into that in a minute, that instruct us that we should be willing to give and show generosity because that's how God is. He likes to give. He likes to be generous. And if you've ever experienced that generosity from God in your life, then you know. And he doesn't expect anything less from his people. We're supposed to take what God gives us and in turn try to give it back to other people as well. Anyway, let's get into the first scripture here, Matthew 5, 41 through 42. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You see, already he's saying, not only do I want you to give and help people, but I want you to go the extra mile. See, that's where we get that term from, go the extra mile, because it was in the Bible. We're supposed to go the extra mile. We're supposed to do above and beyond. You know how God blesses. He blesses over and abundantly, right? Your cup overfloweth. He doesn't just fill your cup up. He just makes sure that thing is all the way to the brim and <laughs> overflowing. That's how much blessing our God gives us. And he's wanting us to uh, do the same. If somebody says, hey, can you help me? You go and help them to the best of your ability. But they're also must come with discernment. God is not just telling you to help every single person that is out there because you, know, you wouldn't have time to help everybody for one. It's just impossible. But there's also people who take advantage. And there's people God is wanting to uh, not be helped at a certain time. And I want to just tell you a, a quick little story. But one time me and my friend went to the movies. Actually, we had went to... Uh, eat at a restaurant next to the movie and there was a man who came up and walked up to us and he had uh, his movie glasses on. He had uh, watched a 3D movie and uh, he said, oh me and my family, uh, we got a family of five over here. We went over here to watch this 3D movie but we don't have any gas to get home. And I thought it sounded fishy and something was paying in my spirit and I knew something wasn't right. I just knew the situation wasn't right. And sometimes God will give you that discernment. Sometimes God will speak to your spirit. He might not speak to everybody else about it, but he'll speak to you about it and let you know something's not right here. And he will give you discernment, your spirit, to help you figure the situation out. So he was letting me figure this out, that this guy was just asking for money. He didn't, he didn't need it. He was just asking for money. And a lot of times you will encounter people who try to take advantage of you. They just want whatever you got. It don't matter if they really need it or not. They're just trying to take advantage. And if God gives you that discernment and helps you realize, oh, this ain't right, you don't have to do it at that point because God's letting you in on the situation. He's letting you realize there's something not right going on here. There's something fishy going on. So I told the man, I said, it doesn't make much sense that you and your family would have piled into the car with no gas and drove all the way to Beaumont, because he said he lived in Buna, to go watch a 3D movie, which is the most expensive thing that you can watch, you and your entire family, and not plan on having any money to go get gas to get back home. I said, that don't sound right to me. And he got mad and walked off, but I could tell... <coughs> He was just trying to take advantage. There's no way that you would plan a trip so horribly that you wouldn't account for your family's return being able to make it home. 
You would go watch the cheapest movie that you can. You wouldn't go watch the most expensive. And you would have had enough money to go get gas and make it back home. Anyway, that's just one example with a, a slew of many that I've had to deal with in my life where God has given me discernment in the situation and let me realize, hold on, something's not right here. And, and in those situations when God does that, don't feel that obligation that you have to give or help somebody, okay? Because not everybody who asks really needs. Sometimes people take advantage. And also, here's another example. It's not something that I've faced, but it's something that I've seen. Some people will go panhandle on the side of the road and not really need it. They'll actually have a lot of money. And in this one particular instance that I'm thinking of, this person was rich and would go panhandle and ask for money. Oh, I need help. Please, God bless you. Help me. And ask for that and then go get in their Rolls Royce or go get in their Mercedes or whatever and go drive back home to their mansion and pay all their bills from people who are just trying to help people. And they were just taking advantage. How sick and how pathetic. But if God gives you discernment in the situation, you don't feel like you have to do that, okay? Although God tells us that we should help people, and we certainly should, to the best of our ability, but there also are going to come times where you don't just have to say yes to everybody. And well, here's another good example. If somebody said, hey, give me uh, all your money in your bank account. I really need it. Do you think God's going to uh, be mad at you for refusing that? <laughs> no, we have to use discernment, you know, and, and realize that there might be some people out there trying to take advantage of us. But there also is a lot of good fruit from helping people and showing generosity. Let's look how the church started out. All right, we're going to go to Acts 2, 44 through 47. Now, all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. The church started out with everybody being generous and generous with the church members, helpful with one another. Now, I'm not asking everybody to go out and sell everything that you got. That's how this particular uh, church started. This is how uh, Christianity started out. This is how God wanted things to grow. Nevertheless, if God did ask us to do that one day, we would have to comply. We'd have to listen to be obedient. But this is how they started out, with generosity. God wanted everybody to know, hey, you're going to be taken care of here. Now, there might have been some people who had a lot more than some of the others, and they had to sell what they had to be able to help the others to be able to come up, you know? And that just might be the case. God might ask you to give over and abundantly to somebody who really needs help. Matter of fact, I just shared a story on my Facebook page, if you want to go check it out of this man inviter who was living in destitute and thankfully uh, many of his classmates found out about it and were and are taking care of him. And that's just what you should do as a Christian. You find out a, about somebody who is in need and you take care of that need. You see a need, you feel a need, right? You take care of the people that you see that are hurting to whatever, to the best of your ability. Now, like I said, with discernment. 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. So they were, even though they were living in poverty, they were givers. They would give. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift in the fellowship of the ministering of the saints. So even though they didn't have a lot to give, they gave even more than they probably should have, he said, because they just wanted to 
make sure that they were givers. And matter of fact, the title here uh, in this New King James Version says, Excel in giving, going above and beyond what you even can sometimes. Because God will outgive you. He will take care of you. He, if you are one of his people and you uh, are trying to help somebody and you're like, man, you know what? I just want to just give. I just want to bless their socks off. And you bless them and you're like, well, now I don't have as much as I needed for whatever. God's going to take care of you some kind of way. He always does. He is going to take care of you. You trust in him. You, you don't be scared about giving. We'll only have $100. You know, I don't. I don't know what's going to happen, you know, and I know, I know they need it, but if God's pressing upon your heart to give to them, like I said with discernment, don't push that away because if God's leading you to do it, he will provide a way for you in some other way. Matter of fact, there's somebody who just uh, wanted to bless me and my wife and my family, and they gave us some money, and then, you know, God blessed them Ten times more and even more than that right after that. Because he, you know, this person was feeling like God was wanting them to give to us. And boom, God took care of them. And he will do it. I've seen it so many times. I'm not making it up. If God's impressing on your heart to do something, do it. And just walk, sit back and wait because he will take care of you. He will. 2 Corinthians 9, 5-13. <clears throat> Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren to go, a, to go to you ahead of time and prepare your generous gift beforehand, which you had previously promised, that it may be ready as a matter of generosity and not as a grudging obligation. So this church had promised to give to Paul and his ministry so that he could continue and spread the gospel the way that God had called him to, but they were being generous, all right? But he was telling them, hey, don't don't a, a grudging obligation. Sometimes we feel like, man, I, I'll give, but I really don't want to. You know, that's not the kind, that's not the way he wants us to be. If you're gonna give, give, but don't do it grudgingly. Don't be like, oh well, here, take it, you know. Be, have a, a cheerfulness about you, all right? And here, here, this is where we get that from. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. So if you only want to give just a little bit, you know, you're going to reap just a little bit. And he who sows bountifully, you give a lot, will also reap a lot. All right? So let each one gives as he purposes in his heart, you know. If you feel like, oh, well, I'm, I'm scared. I don't really want to give a lot. I'm only going to give a, a, a penny. Well, you're only going to reap a little bit back. But if you're like, you know what? I'm just going to have faith and I'll trust that God's going to take care of me. I'm feeling him moving me. I'm feeling him to do that. I'm just going to bless and just you just give. God's going to boom, bountifully give back. I mean, it's just what he says in his word here. So, and then he says, let each one gives as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly, not <clears throat> angrily, not, not forcefully, not as an obligation or of necessity. You feel like only because I have to, I will. It says, for God loves a cheerful giver. He wants people to, to be cheerful about their giving. When you give to somebody, be happy about it. Be excited about it. Man, God's blessing them today. And, and you don't have to feel like it's you doing it. You feel like God's using you to bless somebody. God is using you to help somebody else. And then give God the glory for it. Thank you, Father, for blessing them. Even though the money exchanged hands from yours to theirs, you bless God for it. God, thank you for blessing them. And you don't take credit for it. You give the credit to God. Because he who does in secret will be rewarded in secret. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, right? Just give and just let it be, 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 be what it is, all right? <clears throat> And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Isn't that good? When you give, God's going to take care of everything that you need, not just finances. He says you'll have all sufficiency in all things. You'll be well taken care of in every situation in your life. You may sow a monetary blessing to somebody, but you might reap a spiritual harvest. Isn't that good? 
You might reap a, a, a mental help. Man, I, I have all the money I need, but I don't, I don't care about that. I got, I got some problems going on up here. I need some help in my mind. Boom, spiritual blessing. Thank you, Lord. He, he gives you all things. You may have an abundance for every good work. An abundance. Well taken care of. When you have a habit of wanting to give and being a cheerful giver, God's going to bless you. Now, this ain't no uh, money-grubbing scheme. This ain't no pyramid scheme. This is just what God says in his word. If you are a cheerful giver, <coughs> if you are a cheerful giver, <coughs> He's going to bless you in many ways. As it is written, He has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. See, God is always giving. And He wants us to be like that too. He wants us to be givers. Now, may He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increases the fruits of your righteousness which you are enriched in everything for all liberality. When you are giving in all aspects, you are being enriched. Isn't that good? You're being enriched in everything, in every aspect of your life when you are a giver. When you're a cheerful giver, God is going to take care of you. Which causes thanksgiving through us to God. For the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also is abounding through many thanksgivings to God. So this particular case, they were giving to the work of the ministry, and it was, it was able to help everybody, all right? While through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing with them and all men. When you share with people, be liberal about it. Be, meaning, just give and, and over in abundance like God does. Don't be, don't be scared about how you're giving. I'll give just a little bit, but I'm not all of it. I'm going to hold on to most of it, you know. And we, we don't need to be greedy, okay? If God pour, pours it on your heart to, to really bless somebody, you really bless them and just let see, just see what happens. Because trust me, God takes care of his people. And maybe God wants to use you to be a blessing to somebody else. Philippians 4, 10 through 20. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased or brought down. And I know how to abound or brought up. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me in every situation. I know I can either, I, even in the hard times I know how to handle that. In the good times I know how to handle that. But in all things God strengthens us. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but only you. He's saying, hey, whenever I left from Macedonia, nobody was giving to me, but y'all were, and he needed it. He needed funds in the ministry. You know, believe it or not, people think, oh, well, you should just do all this and, and, and not ask for any money, but we need it. <laughs> We need it to share the gospel, okay? There's a lot of things that we need. We need things taken care of just like anybody else. And the more time that we uh, use for the ministry, the better. All right? So these people understood that. So they were given to Paul, funding him in his ministry so he could do even more for Christ. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift. He's not saying, hey, I... You know, that's not what I'm, it's not, that's not what it's about. It's not about the money. The money is just a means to an end. He's not seeking that. He says, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. He's saying, whenever you give, I know that God's coming back to give to you. That's what I seek. When, when you give, when you take hold of this understanding of being a cheerful giver, and you start to use that in your life, and you start to be generous, 
God's going to open the floodgates to you. He's going to bless your socks off. And, and, and we shouldn't be doing that to get those blessings. We should just want to do it because that's what God has called us to. But he's saying, I understand the situation. He's saying, I understand that this fruit is going to abound to your account when you give. And that's what he said. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the thing sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. It's a sacrifice to us. Hey, man, it's hard to let go of that. I worked hard for that. But, hey, God's going to accept it. It's an acceptable sacrifice to God, and it's well-pleasing to him. Anybody want to please God today? Give. Be generous. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God owns, uh, he owns this whole thing. He created everything. He can supply all your need. All right? Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Isn't God so good? He takes care of us. He takes care of us in everything. And he wants us to have that same kind of mindset. You see your brother in need, you go take care of him. You see your sister in need, you go take care of her. If you have the means to do it. But if you see somebody trying to take advantage, if you see something fishy going on, if God's pinging your spirit... If he's giving you discernment, oh, whew, I may not should do that. Something's going on. God will give you the understanding. Even if nobody else understands. The whole world might not understand. Why didn't you do this? Well, I was listening to God and God told me not to. Well, okay. You know, they're just going to have to uh, deal with it. All right? All right, Deuteronomy 15, 7. If there is among you a poor man... Of your brethren within any of the gates in your land which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not harden your heart nor shut your hand from your poor brother. If you see your brother or sister in destitute, you take care of them to, to your ability, to whatever ability you have. You know, you might have to go in above and beyond to do so, but you try your best, all right? Isaiah 32, verse 8. But a generous man devises generous things, and by generosity he shall stand. A generous man is devising generous things. He's thinking, how can I help somebody today? How can I bless somebody's socks off today? You know, I've heard of people who uh, go to uh, fast food restaurants, maybe like Sonic, and they'll go buy their food, but they'll say, hey, put this $20 to the person behind me. And I've actually been blessed by that one time. I was like, I got up to the window, you know, and, we, you know, being a pastor, you know, don't make a lot of money, you know, but uh, any blessing I get is a blessing, you know what I'm saying? So uh, whenever I got up to the, the window, somebody said, oh, the person behind you uh, bought your meal. I said, what? <laughs> wow. You know, and if that's ever happened to you, uh, please share it in the comments. But it's awesome that people devise ways of blessing somebody else. You know, I've heard of people just, you know, uh, giving an envelope of money to somebody that they know that, that they need it. You know, hey, let me just give them some money because I know they need it and I know they're struggling. You heard about it. Well, you just send it and you bless their socks off. And you don't have to put your name on it and you don't have to let them know about it, but you just bless them and watch what and see what God does. We have to be a generous people and we need to... Uh, uh, devise generous things about how to give. And then it says, by your generosity, you're going to stand. God will help you to stand. You're not going to fall. God's going to take care of you. He'll lift you up. He'll take care of your situation. What are, whatever it is, he, you'll be a blessed in, and above and beyond in all situations. Not just financially, but spiritually. Not just uh, in your finances, but with your body. Not just with your finances, but with your relationships. And, but, you know, hey, everything happens to everybody, though. So if something bad happens, don't say, oh, well, I gave there. You should have helped me here. God knows what he's doing. He allows certain things to come upon you, too. But nevertheless, God will give you an over and abundance of blessing in many ways. But you have to be a generous person. Be willing to give. Proverbs 11.25, The generous soul will be made rich. And he who waters will also be watered himself. 
Now, this richness isn't necessarily financially, all right? You're not going to be made a millionaire just from being a generous soul, okay? He can do it, but more than likely, it's going to be an overall richness of life, okay, in various ways, all right? There's a lot of ways to be rich other than just monetarily. Proverbs 22, verse 9, He who has a generous eye will be blessed, for he gives of his bread to the poor. Those who are looking at this world and seeing people in need and say, I'm going to give, you will be blessed. Those who have a generous eye, those who look at people's misfortune and says, Ooh, I just want to help them. I just want to help that person. God's going to bless you for being that way because that's how God is. He loves to bless. And that's how we need to be. We need to have that generosity inside of us that we just want to bless somebody. We just want to help somebody. We want to take care of them. But of course, with discernment, there's always going to be discernment, folks. Jesus didn't just go and just help every single person, all right? He helped the ones that he knew needed it. You know, he, okay, this person really needs it. I'm going to go help them, you know? He didn't just go through a hospital and just heal every single person, all right? You know, that seems like that's what we should do, but no, God has discernment. He wants to help those who really need it at the time that they need it, and sometimes people don't need all that blessing right now. Sometimes they don't need all that money right now because they'll just go blow it and spend it on worldly things. And But then there's times where somebody was just really desperate and needs help, and, and if you help them, boom, God's, God's moving in that. All right? Luke 6, 38. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. When you give. All right? How much ever you give. All right, let's just say you only had two pennies. I only got two pennies to my name, but I'm going to give. You give. God's going to take, it, it don't matter it was only two pennies. God say, saw that you gave it your all. Matter of fact, Jesus uses in another place, uh, the rich man gave out of his abundance, but the poor person only gave the last two mites that they had, and God said that she was more righteous than the rich person. It don't matter how much you give, it's, it's the generosity in your heart, the cheerfulness, because God knows how much you got. God knows that if you're a millionaire, oh, you get $20. Well, that seems like a lot. Well, it's not really to a millionaire, but a person who's living paycheck to paycheck who gives $20, God sees that. God sees, man, they're really generous. So I'm going to be really generous in return. Do you see that? Good measure. Press down. Shaking together so that there ain't no gaps. It's packed. All right? You just think of a cup that is just packed. And it's overflowing it's got so much. That's how much God's wanting to bless. That's the kind of blessing God gives. So if we see that, God really blesses people. Learn from that. Take, take notes. Okay, well, that's how God's blessing me. Maybe I should bless somebody else like that. Romans 12, 8. He who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Now, this is just showing a little list of things that we should do, but it says, he who gives, give liberally. Liberality is basically meaning giving a bunch, all right? He who give, if you're going to give, don't just give a little bit. Give a bunch to whatever you can, obviously, to whatever you're capable of doing, but be liberal in your giving, of your time, of your service, of whatever it is, give liberally. Ephesians 4, verse 28. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give who is in need. Listen to that. He's asking you to go work and work hard so that you will be able to give to somebody who is in need. Not so that you can store up your riches. No. 
He's wanting you to work hard, earn a good living, work with your hands, so that when you see somebody in need, you can give to them who needs it. See, that's what he's saying. He is wanting us to be like he is, givers, showing generosity. 1 Timothy 6, 18. Let them do good that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share. Y'all catching the theme yet? <laughs> we need to be rich in good works. We need to do what God has called us to do. We need to be ready to give. Not reluctant to give, not obligated to give, not grudgingly giving, but ready to. Looking for opportunities, having that generous eye. Ooh, ooh, there's somebody that needs help over there. Devising generous things. Ready to give to somebody and willing to share what you have with somebody else who doesn't have. That's how God wants us to be. You want to be like God? You be like this. Because this is what he's calling us to. James 2, 14 through 17. This is a hard one, folks, but listen to it. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. You see that? If you see a brother or sister, fellow Christians who are in destitute, who need help, and they need food, and you don't even take care of them. They need clothes, and you don't even take care of them. What good is your faith if you have the means to provide for them, and you don't even help them? What good is your faith? He's saying without that works combined with your faith, your faith is dead. You need to use your generosity. If God has overly and abundantly blessed you, he's not doing that so that you'll be rich and be fat and, and, and be greedy. He's doing that so that you will take that blessing and bless somebody else that you know that needs it using discernment. You realize that this is a brother and you realize they need help. Bless them. And I trust God will bless you in return. I got one more scripture. Psalm 51, 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. That's how God is. That is how God is. He's a generous spirit. He has a generous spirit. He likes to give to people. He likes to help people, but he doesn't just help every single person at all times. All right, sometimes he lets you go through some stuff, doesn't he? Be honest. Sometimes he lets you go through that struggle, doesn't he? He don't just bless you right when you ask for it sometimes, does he? He makes you wait. He makes for that opportune time, and sometimes we have to use that discernment as well. Just because somebody's got their hand out don't mean that you need to slap money in it because it might be used for something bad. But if God has blessed that person who has that hand out, then you bless it because God is generous as well. And he's calling us to be a generous people. And he's calling us to have a cheerfulness about that generosity. You be cheerful givers. Don't give begrudgingly. Oh man, I guess I'll do it. You give, man, I'm glad I was able to give to them. Man, I'm glad God was able to bless them because I know they needed it. You be that way, and you will be like God is wanting you to be. You will be like how he has instructed you through these scriptures to be a generous giver. All right, I hope you got something good from that. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father, help us. Help us to be like you. Help us to be generous givers, Father. Always wanting to help. But help us to have discernment as well. Help us to know when to give and when not to. And lead us in those opportunities, Father. If there is somebody you want us to bless, show us, reveal it to us. Let us see it in the Spirit so that we can help them. And for those who are just trying to take advantage or for those who are not ready to receive it yet, 
show us that as well so that we can walk in the ways that you've called us to. And Father, we thank you right now and we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all. God bless.